In this video, I'm going to explain high and low pressure systems, what they do, how they work, and what they mean for us pilots. A high pressure system sinks from the upper atmosphere, spins and disperses outwards to a lower pressure area around it. Let's break it down. Up in the upper atmosphere, the air is colder. Cold air is more dense than warmer air and therefore sinks. As it sinks toward the surface, it spins clockwise outward and down in the northern hemisphere. In the southern hemisphere, it spins in the opposite direction. Finally, at the surface, the high pressure cold air leaves and disperses outwards towards lower pressure systems around it. To remember this, think of air as always taking the path of least resistance. That means that high pressure air will seek out and travel to areas of low pressure or less resistance. Because high pressure systems come from air in the upper atmosphere, any water in the air vaporizes as it descends to the lower atmosphere, higher pressure, so that the air is dry when it gets down there. The air is also stable and high pressure systems are generally associated with good and clear weather. A low pressure system rises from the lower atmosphere, spins and brings in surrounding warm air from the surface. Let's break it down. Warm air near the surface from higher pressure systems surrounding a low pressure system gets drawn in. Again, high pressure goes to path of least resistance. As the air enters the system, it spins inward and upward in the counterclockwise direction when in the northern hemisphere. Again, in the southern hemisphere, it spins the opposite direction. We'll explain why this is in a little bit. As the warm air continues to rise, it contributes to this vacuum or sucking effect that draws air in. Because of the rising warm air, low pressure systems are associated with poor weather for pilots. When the warm air rises, any water vapor in it condenses into clouds. With enough rising effect, these can condense into towering cumulus clouds and even thunderstorms. The rising air also causes turbulence, and then when you get this buildup of enough condensation, the clouds become saturated and you get rain, which reduces your visibility. Let's review. High pressure systems spin clockwise in the northern hemisphere and counterclockwise in the southern hemisphere. Low pressure, low pressure systems, on the other hand, spin counterclockwise in the northern hemisphere, so they are the opposite of high pressure systems. And then in, in the southern hemisphere, that switches. Why is this? This is because of the Coriolis effect of the Earth. Now, the Earth spins to the right or to the east. Where the Earth is the widest, the rotational velocity is the highest. So that is in the center near the equator. Where it is the thinnest, like at the poles, the rotational velocity is the slowest. Because of this, if wind was traveling outwards from the equator, you know, air is traveling from the equator to the North or South Pole, it would actually get redirected to the right in the Northern Hemisphere and to the left in the Southern Hemisphere because as it travels further away from that equator, the rotational velocity of the Earth is actually slowing down and it would actually make the it bend as looked at over the Earth on its ground track over Earth. So the air actually gets bent as it goes from the equator to the North Pole to the right. And then as it goes from the equator to the, to the South Pole, it gets bent to the left. And remember, low pressure systems draw air in from higher pressure areas surrounding it and high pressure air escapes out to surrounding areas of low pressure. Because the earth and atmosphere spin slower near the poles, both pressure systems paths are bent to the right, making the inward flowing lower pre low pressure system spin counterclockwise and the outward flowing high pressure system spin clockwise like you see in this animation. And then in the Southern hemisphere, the effect is mirrored. This is because in the Southern hemisphere, the wind travels away from the equator and it is redirected to the left instead of right, again due to the slower spinning earth and atmosphere near the poles because of that change in rotational velocity. So that explains why these pressure systems spin the way that they do in one hemisphere, hemisphere and then in the opposite direction in the other hemisphere. It's because of that rotational velocity of the earth changing and that Coriolis effect that we get from the earth's rotation. We also talked about in this video, you know, what weather those pressure systems bring, how they interact with the air around them, and why we care about that stuff as pilots. 